2000 WCW. Throughout the southern states of America, far from, far from the glamour and bright lights of network television, there exists the outlaw wrestler. And I miss the rest. This is their story. One summer night, one small town. This is Southern Discomfort. This was, I believe, shot in 1994 and not released until the year 2000. When it was on Showtime every fucking night at 2 a.m. after the porn stuff. Let's turn up the audio a bit. They could not make this town look more backwards, so I'm sure they didn't get any help. We are somewhere in Alabama, Mockton maybe? Temperature 105 degrees. We, we needed to know what the weather was like. Clinton was president. Uh, I don't know who won the World Series in before, but... Who the fuck's this guy? Oh, he's the promoter. Uh, this is kind of called wild posting. Uh, of course he's smoking a cigar. Why wouldn't he be? Yes, Adam, this is the one with Bob Arms. But I'd look for uh, abandoned barns. Gotta stay away from telephone poles, though, because the power company always uh, objects to that. But, uh... The guy does come along, I like, square him up with a couple of tickets. They could not have found is, at least for a, couple of days, somebody might a see better wrestling place. promoter. Like, this is the guy you call to play wrestling promoter on TV shows. I love how he's like, yeah, the power company doesn't like them. Post on, on telephone poles, and then he just does it anyway. It's a hot day today, but it'll be a hot Yeah, there's, that's right, today. Kevin, there's nobody. He just posted on a random shed. That telephone pole looks like it's near nothing. There's Mike Jackson. Oh, Bambi and, Pe and Peggy Lee Leather, wrestling's first couple. Referee in jeans. It was a good sight. Ad break on Twitch. Sorry to those of you watching on Twitch with the ad break. I guarantee you there's no AC in that gym. Maybe one like little little like window that, but nothing that actually helps. Sachs High School. In One career, fan. Started out as a wrestler, just like everybody else. But you know, I figured out pretty soon that. That did say music by Chuck Serino. Yes, Jared Sheik. Hello. Everybody in the business knows that if you don't have a ring, Rick Montana. You can always get another wrestler. Ex wrestler and promoter. Eight or nine years ago, I had a big knee injury. Cost seventeen thousand dollars to have repaired. Me being a college boy, I figured out real quick that it wasn't worth the risk. People keep asking me if, if uh, you know, if I'm ever going to get back in the ring, and they keep saying, you know, really you should, and all this kind of stuff. And especially in these, in these small towns, because, you know, the bad guys come out here and they do all this stuff, and I was always a good guy. And, uh, and they say, man, you really need to come out, brother. Of the promoter standing behind the guy, like, like I'm not going to help you with that. And uh, I don't know. You know, there's some they appear to just be to, like putting the boards wherever the the ring, which I'm sure will make the, the wrestlers very happy. And it's a wrestling documentary, so we have to have the scene where they put the ring up. That dude is covered in sweat. He needs to stop smoking cigars. 105 degree heat. Chuck Serino. Strong career, and then he ended up doing uh, Southern Discomfort. If you look at it real close, you can see the steel is sagging just a little bit, you know, like, like right here. It kind of goes down and up and down. That's what having so many guys. That, then you got these big guys that weigh 325 pounds, like Jack Lord or some of them guys. 
I love like saying Jack Lord. Like anybody knows who the hell Jack Lord is. You know the famous Jack Lord. At least he's protecting the integrity of a gym. Oh jeez. Random do rag ring crew guy. Love it. Sure, I'll sell it, but I figured he was just some some mark who came along and really didn't have any money or anything. Oh, drop so he it. said, "Well, I want your truck and your trailer and your ring. How much is that going to cost me?" So I quoted him a price that I thought would blow him out of the water. He reaches in his back pocket and pulls out a paper sack and starts counting. Of out course, on the this guy has a paper sack. Well, how you gonna get home? This promoter's like <laughs> walking around with a bag I'll of take money. A cab. Who cares? I keep trying to get out of the wrestling business. I've been doing this for 12 years. Every time I try and get out. Somebody always sucks me back in. Why, why, if he's not involved in the promotion, why is he setting up the ring? Well, it's about 115 in here today. It's about 105 outside, but we've been carrying the steel in to build this ring, and it's damn high. Well, I'm glad to see it up. So we got he is so time. wet. Yeah. All right. Well, and you know he's he, you know he's got money because he doesn't wear his watch. He pulls it out of his pocket. Bambi, apparently the NWA Women's Champion at this time. I didn't know they had a women's champion. Worked out at a fitness center where a bunch of the wrestlers trained, and one of them said, "Oh, you love it so much. Why don't you get into it?" Yeah, so I went to I'm, I'm waiting for people to clip and, uh, out. He's so wet. Line. Thank oh, you. Oh, probably about six months before I had my first professional bout, and uh, I've been wrestling ever since. Oh, this guy rules. I forgot about this guy. Oh, he's also the print, the Power Raider. <laughs> he's wrestling Shiki, baby. I'm very happy to be a big star. WrestleMania age shirt. I was at that WrestleMania. Indianapolis. That hat. I still I have a lot of feeling. When I'm not doing wrestling, I'm bouncing heads off down in Florida and around Georgia. We get in down in there and some of them over. But what, what, what's your job? That's not a job. Bouncing heads is not a job. Is Shane Henderson hurting that kid? <laughs> That's not Shanghai Pierce. This is the era where you can just find a mask and say you're whoever. But of all the pe all the masked wrestlers, you're Shanghai Pierce. Yeah, Bob Armstrong was like top babyface in Smoky Mountain. I was raised on a farm. And a good friend of mine came to me and said, why don't you try professional wrestling because you're very strong. I used to pick 50 pounds of sweet feet over my shoulder, feed the cattle, and this is all what? I did. What? I don't want to hear the story. Someone saw this woman walking around with 50 pounds of sweet peas. You need to be a wrestler. I just like it all. I can just wrap it all up. <laughs> We don't get those anymore. It's like, oh, I grew up watching wrestling. I love, I love, you know, so and so. Thank you for the cheers, Dave. Appreciate it. Appreciate it a whole bunch. We don't get wrestling origin stories. Like, I was picking up all these sweet peas. Bob Jackson. I like to see the good ones. I don't want to see none of these jerks. You know, just off. Hell yeah. I mean, I like to see good ones. That's a good fan right there. Little better. Just kind of gets everybody worked up into a laugh. I love the juxtaposition of the footage. Like these people just like, let's fucking show the end. Is that Bo James? Oh, yeah. these, these are the best fans. That's not like life. You can't just fight people. I love that kid. That kid is great. Is, is that Pat Powers or what? Pam Powers? What was her name? From the backyard wrestling we've had? She a veteran of the Southern Indies? Then moved up to California to just manage a backyard fed. So I just manage. Beating somebody up. 
Nasty Steve Lane. I need to go. F I need to find some nasty Steve Lane on YouTube. He looks a bit you know, like Paul Ivey, a little bit. They would just stay home since you're going to get on that subject and take a bath every now and then and clean up. Nasty Steve. Look at that shirt. He's, this guy rules. Crop top with the dangly parts. This guy is great. I can't even go out and read half the time. They smell. They don't take a bath. They have no deodorant in their house. <laughs> what is he doing? <laughs> what? I'm not gonna guarantee a win. I'm not gonna guarantee a victory, but I will guarantee a lot of pain and punishment. And anything I have to do, I guarantee you, this guy's like good. Around my waist, that's what I'm gonna do. I don't care what it is. Well, they told Steve Lane he couldn't preach a sermon, but I just got one thing to tell you. And you take it in just like you do your preachers on Sunday morning. You bunch of hypocrites. You sit down and you shut up. That rules. I like the chess game of wrestling. I like getting in there and seeing what kind of moves my opponent might have. Trying yes. to master them moves, getting in there, trying to judge what he. I'm sure. I'm sure he is on cage match. He's probably like 35 years Southern Indy vet. Wrestling is a chess game. That's what it's always been. And Nasty Steve Lane was on the NWA anniversary show that had Daniel Zaji and Karina Hashimoto. I'm, I'm sure this guy's worked everywhere. He's one of those weird southern guys that just has ended up in every promotion. And we don't know. Nasty Steve and his old lady. I hope that's her name. That'd be such a good valet name. His old lady? was just either a little man or a big fat slob. And now, up until about 10 years ago, the little man was still in wrestling. And the little man's still there, but he can't compete with a big, strong, fast man. And that's what I am. I'm big. I weigh 270. You know, back when Vince hired and I'm this guy. If it does get bloody, it won't be me. Well, and all if those I'm other guys that look like Shanghai Pierce. Make Shanghai Pierce are there. Ladies and gentlemen, six foot five inches tall, 295 pounds. He is the one and only NWA World Heavyweight Champion. Wait, what? The NWA World. What? <laughs> No! <laughs> been doing the ring by his old lady. Now, fake Shanghai Pierce against Nasty Steve. Fake Shanghai is walking over the top rope, so he's like 6'3. Yeah, we have a fake NWA world champion. Billy Corrigan needs to book Nasty Steve to get his shot that he earned. Love this music. Mm. <laughs> Someone just recorded themselves taking a poop and then like put a beat under it. <laughs> Scott Hall watched Nasty Steve. He's like, my tights need to look like that. What's the story exactly, Soggy the Drugs? What's the story? Where's her where's the video pack? Oh jeez! Oh jeez! That ring's falling apart. I love how they give us the big long soliloquy about how the ring goes together and the physics of it, and then they start bumping it, and it's like flopping. Looks like very unsafe. Very loose canvas. Yeah, whoever's shooting this is going to make me throw up. All these zooms. Shit. They do sh <laughs> fake Shanghai Pierce needs to do a run in on the bloodline. Oh jeez, that he hit his head on the bottom rope somehow. Ooh. Oh, um, apparently they, they gotta bring this back next month. Hot NWA World Title. Oh, jeez. Okay, I, that's what I said. This nasty Steve is secretly probably really good. 
That's what I mean. Great bump for that hitbox. Yeah, Shanghai comes out. Take Shanghai. Hey, Cody, this is the belt your dad held. I can go anywhere in this country. World Heavyweight Wrestling Champion. It looks it looks like a the toy version of the but not like the real toy version, like the dollar store toy version of the big gold. Jax. That that's that's the restaurant that they come up with. Or like in a sitcom when they can't get the rights to like McDonald's. There is no way Shanghai and, and, Na and Nasty Steve did any of that choreography. This is a senior guy's team. great. And we have a lot of elderly folks, and they like fresh vegetables. That's what keeps them in good health and everything. So we try to provide them with a good lunch. You know, those fresh vegetables, so they get it. The buffet. We're going to get another great camera shot where people are just walking right through that. I'm a homeboy, and I like cooking fresh vegetables. When I, when I look at this guy, I think homeboy. Hey, Paul Topper, yes, the, they, they definitely like those fresh vegetables. Wasn't creepy until the end. Some folks think it's the craziest thing in the world, but that's it's just a fun for me. And he just looks off in the middle of nowhere. What makes a good villain? The audience makes a good villain. Because I can go anywhere in this country. And do anything I want to, and I don't have to worry about people, you know, coming up to. Sometimes I wish they would know, but other times I just. I tell them that. All I don't think it's the mask that's the stopping them from that's doing that, buddy. Check into a nursing home because they're used up, dried up. What? You got a dried up diabetes tooth loof. What is that? I think he had a stroke at the end. Yeah, we, we need like nothing to do with wrestling. Just guys that have second lives as masked people. That needs to be... What? What is happening? Oh shit, the bullet's coming. The bullet is born and ready for action. <laughs> it only takes a second. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about a man who is more than a man. He is a legend. All the darkness out there. Oh yes, the, 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 the chicken nugget kid. Chicken nuggets is my family. This has to be the town he's from. Did he just like psych that kid? Like, no, you don't get a handshake, baby. This is professional wrestling. This is how it was meant to be. A 65 year old man wrestling the guy that owns the buffet down the street. You're both wearing weird pervert masks. And the whole town is there to watch. This is professional wrestling. Not even WWE Deep Cuts Live and we got an Armstrong. There's this this is what wrestling should be. Just an old man dancing around half nude in a high school gym. While a restaurant manager in a sweater is like, you stop doing that! Hey Optimum Vision. With these wrestlers. When I go to wrestle. I go there to be the champion. That's all that's on my mind. I'm I'm, I, love this, I love to hear this guy politic. Listen, I make good money I running money. jacks. I, want to kill me before I, leave that ring. I can't I be like leaving this restaurant unless I'm the champ.
What I love is about this is like, I'm sure these women are like the nicest, sweetest old women. Like six and a half days out of the week. And then they come to wrestle. You motherfucker! You fat piece of shit! Bob's 55. Doesn't look a day over 70. Great shape, though. They're, they're jumping the invisible rail over this. This is great. Yeah, the way it used to be in the way you like it. Did he just pull the blade out of his mouth? He's gonna cut him? <laughs> Fabulous. I, I assume that's the director of the documentary. Like, I assume that guy, like, shoots porn on the side. He shows up, he's like, hey, um, can I just, like, do something on the show? They're like, sure. Got a, got a funny name? Yes, Karate Thrust. I assume the referee is just a fan that showed up and fits in the shirt. Oh, he's got brass knucks. Oh, fireball! Did not expect that. Yeah, like, we don't need referees. Referee can be on fire for all I care. I love this. <laughs> it's gonna, I'm gonna rain you with this chair. But I will see you tomorrow at Jack's. You guys open at 10, right? Do they have the guy doing the cop gimmick also running security? It's very fun. The, the director's na name is Fred, right? Because this guy's name is Freddy Valentine. Like, I'm almost positive that's the guy that's putting together this movie. Getting to play heel manager. That, that's not English. It's hard to see with fire in there. I'm glad that the referee got a title and a name key. There's no way that's an action. That's yeah. That's not a cop. Yeah, that dude's yeah. That dude's. Oh. Okay, Fred Olinari was much older. Okay. I still think that's like a Hollywood guy that came with the. Film. This is a big deal in 1994. Hey, the guy's big. He's hard to move. He must weigh at least 325 or 350. He's not tossed kind of like wrestling a bowling ball. I, I love how Bob ball Armstrong ball. is like, I'll freely take off the mask, but we're going to act like that match was real. I hope people don't think I look like Dan Schneider. He's known for that. He burnt me one time and Gordon Sully was announcing. He burnt me in Birmingham, Alabama. When I was sold out crowd, he burnt all the hairs off my body from here to my neck. And I've never forgotten that. So that's what he's known for. That's why they call him a flame. You never know what he's going to do. He's always got somebody to hand it to him or got it hidden somewhere on him. You can see he's moving around out there a lot. He's always got something somewhere that's kind of a distraction. Trying to psych out his opponent. You know, I'm real careful about you ever, that. Do you sure think that guy did that trick at the restaurant to, like, impress old people? Like, hey, watch what I can do. <laughs> Fireball. Yeah, I, I get a lot of, I get a lot of Chris Park, a lot of abyss. When the guys got in there, they went for it, buddy. They went for head, they went for toe, and these days... They went for head, they went for toe. That should have been the name of this movie. It's what it ought to be, what it used to be. People wrestled back in, that's the difference. It's very possible to wrestle more than one event per day or per night in the uh, Georgia, Alabama area here. Well, that is Fred. Okay, uh, that makes there sense. Are many, many, many small promoters 
Yeah, so we have confirmation Freddie Valentine is the director of this Wrestling. I cannot get over that the dude that runs Jax is also doing multiple gimmicks on this show. This was filmed in uh, Alabama, Optimum. This was made in 1994, didn't come out till the year 2000. You've had a pretty good payday. <laughs> I get paid a little bit. Well, the Red Ranger just football, worked another match. So I, See, he's got to be in pain. Bring your car out. Parking lot just about day four yesterday. And, uh, Why am I not shocked that the flame is a stolen gift? Cattle and everything on it down in uh, Georgia. So I enjoy it. I'm making, I'm making a nice little living. I'm oh, sure you make a nice living as a fake big boss man. Alabama. <laughs> I got into professional wrestling because as a kid, my dad is a big wrestling fan, and he used to take me to the wrestling matches all the time, and we'd sit front row, and, and ever since I was about four years old, I attended the matches, and it was just a big deal to me. I mean, it was like the most glamorous I thought life when she said, seen, you know? my I dad, I thought we were going to get a trauma dump right there. Like to see women wrestle because for years, all they've Bob Armstrong just freely wrestle, getting dressed a sport. while and a woman paces around in an empty room with them. It's like a novelty. They'd see the midgets and they'd see the women. But I think nowadays, uh, people like to see the women and get, get in there and do just as much as the men. And they've seen it and this in the is past. 1994. And just as much as the men can do. And, uh, it's a We've story. had the you know, women's like revolution happening for many years. Like the they see the women get out there, and they love it, you know, because I think everybody knows that deep down when a woman gets mad, she can always put on a better fight than a man can. So uh, I, think, I think people like that. But we have fake Big Bubba and fake Big Boss Man on the me, same show. Of course the director well, is also managing the women's me, match. I go out there, I'm 110% serious when I step in the square circle. I am very serious. I think Lee Leather has a very good skincare plan. I tell you when I first got into it, I didn't win a lot of matches because you Bob, a lot. Bob Armstrong rules. A, like, I'm sure he walked up to Big Big Boss Man and was like, hey, Ray, how you doing? And I've had the belt for about two years now. That is a big thing to me. I mean, in every sport, you want to be the champion, you know? And, uh, hey, and Ref Vinny, women are wrestling in 2000 was weird. Uh, that pay per view was something where the referee just randomly takes the Mick Foley bump off the cage. Yeah, Bambi was in WCW for him. Peggy Lou Leather was too. The she did an angle where she was like a possessed is, fan a lady by the name of Queen who was taken, I whose brain was taken over by the, uh, the black scorpion and jumped the rail and attacked Sting. And it took a while for me to learn the strategy of wrestling a big wrestler like that. Because uh, when you first get in there, you might just get pounded to death. But I learned that she was I really big. I love and that I was a lot the folks, and so I had to the successful the wrestlers that are like to to get her off her feet. working the shit out of these documentarians. And I'd say by the end of our wrestling series, I was pretty much... For those of you who don't know, uh, Bambi and Peggy Lee Leather in real life were a couple. Traveled around the country doing this match. I don't think Peggy Lee Leather has opened her mouth once while well talking. Um, Peggy Lee Leather passed away recently, so... But I think they were together until he passed. Yeah, these two, like, were in WCW together. They, they had lined uh, women of wrestling. They were in the AWA. Um, I think they did one of David McLean's other women's promotions. It was on TV. There's just a shirtless child wearing a mask, and it's not my son. Dude, this is great, because the kids are getting so excited, they're just, like, running at her. Like, not waiting. Not waiting their turn. I don't think there even is a front row. I think these people are just standing around. This is, yeah, this is so 1994. I'm sure this is still how one of these shows would look in Alabama. Yeah, that's definitely not Mark Canterbury. That's, uh, that is fake Shanghai Pierce. Keep in mind, Shanghai Pierce was still on WCW TV when this show happened. 
Referee took a fireball and he's back for the women's match. Like, I, I, I enjoy how, at first, the movie looked like it was an inside look at this this indie promotion. And then once the show starts, it's like, now nah, we're just going to film the matches. Like, we're just going to film the show and say it's a movie. I'm glad they, they, they asked the kids that was fun. No. If, if you were a wrestling fan in 1994, you loved wrestling. Is that the finish? Oh, near fall. Also, I think there's a light set up that I think the, the production company put there. Like, there's no way this promotion also has a lighting rig. Or might have might yeah 94 into like the first quarter of 95 was really an American wrestling kicks the referee I'm a big fan of them selling spots that where there aren't seats and just making people sit on the floor I'm surprised more indies don't do that yeah we'll let you in for like a little cheaper but we can't give you a chair and you have to sit on the floor. Can't stand. Yeah, this is Diesel's America. You see that? I love the kids in the front row holding up Polaroids they took with Bandy in intermission. Oh! Hey, Scuffle and Humbelly. Yes, Steve Lane rules. I'm gonna look up some Steve Lane after we're done tonight. He seemed like a very fun little Southern girl. Yeah, that's that's the PTA mom in the crowd. Get thawing it up. These two are doing practically nothing. And this crowd's so into it. I love it. I love it. These two are the best. Oh! But hey, you know what? At least they're not adding sound effects like the TLC crew did. What is that guy? He's like. like Counting cards? They say that you hit your friends the hardest, but never work with your lover if that's the case.
I believe that was a five count from, by Vieta. Hit in the front row biting his nails because he's so nervous that maybe might lose the NWA Women's title. That's definitely not the NWA Women's title. I think that kid was wearing bowling shoes. The one, the little kid that had their feet hanging off. Oh. I love that the old ladies in the crowd actually brought little, like, hand fans. There we go. Bambi wins in Sachs High School in, in Alabama goes wild. Yeah, I got a picture with Bambi. Didn't have Instagram back and then you just held up the pictures you took with wrestlers. The sack screw job. <laughs> That old creep. Is that fan just like pretending to be security? Kids just following her to the locker room. See, the camera following her makes me think she's going to do like one of those New Japan press conferences. Oh man, Naito beat the shit out of me out there. Told her girlfriend fat. I go out there to win. And if in the process you do hurt somebody, it's not intentional to put them out. I know there's a lot of wrestlers in the sport that try to intensely hurt their opponent. It gets bloody. I have people approach me. It gets bloody. Uh, Frank, what about that? Is it blood cap suit? Let me tell you. Let me set the story straight for you. It's not blood cap suit, buddy. It's the real thing. Again, Bob Armstrong and Bambi are keeping kayfabe, and this guy's like. It's, nope, it's I, I cut myself. You're not gonna <laughs> put a blade in the middle of his wrist. Somebody's gonna want to be the aggressor and want to be the real smart aleck, and that's when you really start brawling. And it does happen. I'll tell you in four letters: L U C K. Luck. I've been very lucky. I've been hurt a lot. I've had most of my bones broken in my body at least once. But you know, contact sports like football. You know, football players sometimes they had to replay play the one says, bump from the bullet match. And so that's what they're gonna have to tell me. I've had some broken ribs. Uh, broken nose twice, and I've had this guy uh, did a lot of prep for this interview. Broken finger. Right, did some of those like rubber bands. I haven't took the time. I want to take the time to get it put back right because then I feel like I might go down here. And right now, I'm feeling the better than I've ever felt in my life. This is the best shape of his all life. My teeth knocked out, and we got into a real Donnie Brook in Birmingham, Alabama, with a mass fella. And before it was over, we with the mask fell. <laughs> got into a Donnie Brook with a mast fella. I love this. So I had to get this plate put in. In Japan, I've got my ankle broke a couple of times. Over in, uh, I think it was Sweden, I got my collarbone broke. I think it was Sweden. Uh, my back's been messed up a couple of times. It's the, it's the toughest thing I've ever done. I, I can tell you that. Oh yes, sir. I got several scars on my head here, and one on my nose where it's been just. I've had tire tools. It'd be funny if he's like, yeah, I blade my nose sometimes for fun. And it's really, it'll, it'll get you attention every now and then, but it's something I enjoy. He is so hairy. And like it's an exact cut around the collar. Six weeks at a time, and it happened twice. So, you know, I'm not getting any younger, so the, the chances of me, of me getting back in the ring are pretty slim. I work out six days a Oh, he's, he's three wrestling three a match on the show. Well, I, I, I know it. I, he has to. Running. The flame is uh, the Power Ranger. It's a mental and a physical condition at all times. Uh, the reason I wear this mask is because in 1982, uh, the Million Dollar Man, I'm sure you're familiar with him, Ted DiBiase, uh, he came into the gym and I was doing what you call pullovers. I was on the end of the bench mm -hmm. and I was pulling over 200 pounds. Well, he just thought it was his business. He just walked by the other end of the bench and gave it a kick. Now, I don't know if he meant to kill me or if he meant to hurt me or what. <laughs> no, no, no. I don't know if he was... The murder was in the tent. Nose, nose this nose came from another part of my body that I don't really want to talk about right now. Look at him. Wait, they made his nose out of his ass? They never could get that nose to adhere back to the cranium. So they made his nose out of his ass? Bullet Bob has ass nose? So I'm just, I'm just lucky to be here. I'm really, I really am. I, I came that close to death. Just by the simple fate, I'm here. Thank God. My favorite thing about wrestling is, is when they jump off the top rope. Mine too. 
Now there's high flying. That's why you have so many more injuries. You see, you see people now getting injured all the time. Before, if you they they the clip mat, the lapel the mic on his singlet. Guy, That's adorable. And you get him on the mat, then you become almost the same size. But if you're trying to fly and use your leverage when you weigh 200 pounds less, you I wonder if he offered to like pull it up at the inside of a singlet. Uh, young wrestlers think it's showy. They think, so, think it'll get them a reputation. And most of the time, it just ends up getting them hurt. I said, no, forget it. Absolutely not. No way. Because I knew what I'd been through, and you don't want your children to suffer the same injuries, the pain, the bo broken bones that people don't hear about. All the suffering. Robert, I'm, like, I'm not doing any of that, that, that fucking high-flying like bullshit. You're staying on the ground. And I didn't want he's been working run. this well, entire said, interview, well, except for this part, where he's like, I'm not Atlanta, doing high-flying moves. In the house and they were at the Cadillac waiting on me by the time I got there to drive it. So they got caught up in the enthusiasm, and there was no way to talk them out of it. So by golly, I just trained them and tried to teach them the best I could, and so they'll have maybe as few injuries as possible. My career at this point, probably, <laughs> hopefully I can get another five or six years out of it. That's what I'm looking for. I've had several injuries in I the sport. I uh, hope you do too, buddy. The most, the worst injury I'd say is I broke my arm uh, and my wrist, and uh, that happened about four years ago. I've had ribs broken. I've had a concussion. Yeah, bullet I've had Bob a girl rules. Hit me in the ring and just completely knocked He's me out. He's a ton of I've fun to watch. I had a concussion, uh, but you know, over a period of eight years, that's not so bad. I don't think. <laughs> Expand the lungs and it hurts like hell. Oh. At least you can hold that if it's cracked. Yeah. When you get them cracked in the back, it's twice as bad. Bob oh, explaining to her how to sell her kayfabe injury. You might have just pulled the muscle loose because it hurts so bad just to tear Bob's like a doctor, apparently. Yeah. At least you can put the full pressure on it. I got like one of those braces at home, you know, where you wrap around. Yeah. Best thing you can do. They don't wrap them anymore in the hospital. Yeah. But it still helps. I don't give a damn what they say. If you wrap them, it helps you breathe. If you break, break them in the back, I don't care what those doctors say. That's how I broke three in Louisville with Jerry Lawler. Uh, weekend was all right. All the new Ghostbusters movie. Thought it was decent. Thanks for asking, Tantrum Jungle T. Gray. Oh, man. Do a lot for this. Oh, man. Do a lot for my fake NWA title. She has a suitcase because she's old school. She has one of those Halliburtons to put the uh, title belt in. They unintentionally made this look like the saddest shit. They're selling a kayfabe injury in an empty locker room. First of all, I come from oldest country in the world. They call Persia. I was a shark, Iran cool. bodyguard, and plus I was a high school champion. And after high school champion, I've been Iranian army two years in Iranian army champion. Is he wearing and a denim Shah singlet? The country, and I come to the greatest country in the world, United States of I, America. I sure hope I'm he's wearing a denim singlet. Nobody break my record. And a Captain America do rag. No, that's, that's not Captain America. For shoulder, and a back, hello, and BJ then. Penn. I assume oh, you're not the real BJ Penn, but hello. I'm glad to hear from you from Germany. Nobody Thank you so much for the kind words, BJ Penn. My real resting pen. And the reason I get copper box for charity, but Aaron Schick doesn't need it. Oil man, Wait, gold. The money is not the point. The point is, I just want to tell America. <laughs> it's not, it's not the point to give money to charity. And go pray and go mosque. And do practice and pray to God to you be like the world champion Aaron Sheikh. You wanna come try it? Please come try it. Sheikh's just dragging I, the I, boom I, mic. I, no, that that is the director, yes. Just feel it. Touch him up. They're breaking cafe. Like we'll okay, you, you know he's the director because he's wearing one of those vests. On, what? That's all. That's it, buddy. That's it. Also, why is half of the crowd in there while they're setting up the show? Or is Shiki just walking around before the show with his clubs? Like a weirdo. If I make it from 10,000 mile to I come to the USA, all American greatest wrestling. Oh, I thought he was going to say that he came directly from Iran for this show. And I think I can teach the young generation go probably. Oh, Alabama Dwink was was probably one of the kids in the show. Oh shit! His old lady is going to be walking out with Iron Sheik. Or no, she was just helping him with his flag. 
And of course he has a, has a manager. It's not even the clubs. Yeah, he just found some pipes in the locker room. Yeah, these are the Persian clubs now. It's black and it's white. And people come to wrestling because they understand wrestling. They know good and they know evil. I love how he's joking around and laughing with the fans you know, before the guy, show. Saddam is the evil guy. But over there, they see it a different way. Like when I go to Japan and wrestle, they hate my guts in Japan. When I come back to the States, they love me. It's important to where you wrestle. Whether Bullet you're Bob explaining uh, Japan, foreign uh, relations. It's totally different than in the United States when you wrestle over there. Uh, Random a good guy sidebar a about guy. Japanese you wrestling. Go out there and they applaud you when you win, when you do a spectacular move. It's more like the Olympics. There's no fan favorite or, or no uh, person that they they dislike. They go out there and they watch your match. Yeah, and Shiki had just been on WWF Here's TV a couple years before the this. Fans follow you around. They love you to death. And and if you don't and if they don't necessarily like you, then they may boo you out of the building. But uh, it's real different over there in the other countries. Tokyo, the people over there, I guess, because they are. That is Selena Majors, life. yes, Nathan. You know, over here, they. they wow, beat women's I, champion. Selena Major, Majors at this time was the fake NWA women's uh, champion. The people over here, they're just very vocal. And the random sidebar about working, working in Japan during this documentary about Alabama indie wrestling. They keep cutting to that one guy in the front row holding like a bingo card. Very cool, yeah. Plug for Kim Justice on YouTube. Yeah, some of the Kim Justice videos, very good. Do this some really cool stuff. I'll have to check out that Funk vs. Funk video. It'd be funny if Tommy Rich's face was in the middle of that flag. A lot of these people in body Alabama are in Seahawk. This is Alabama in a, in a test tube. Of course, the manager's wearing the fingerless, like, biker gloves. There we go, the Power Raider! When I wrestle as a Power Raider, I go out there and I, I try to show the kids... Power Raider kind of sounds like a Nazi thing. Which is ironic considering Austin St. James's current stance on politics in the world. And I treat them good, and the kids and I have a real good relationship. I think there's a lot of kids that need somebody to look up to these days. And so they to the Power Raider. When they come up and talk to me, I talk to them like I'm their father. Oh, awesome. You were at that West Coast Pro Show, Nick That's awesome. I feel like a different person when I have a mask on. I'm in there without it. I just feel the people a little different when I do have it and when I don't have it. I can let loose a little more when I have a mask on. Mr. Iron Sheik. <laughs> has to pull the mask the helmet down. <laughs> Iron Sheik was sitting here by Zordon. Not by Zordon, by uh, uh, Rita Repulsa. It might not be the same guy as the flame now. That's the flame now that we're saying that. I think I need a little bit of help out of you people. Yeah, he is he is slimmer. Okay, I yeah, I see that. Let's hit that USA. Let's hit that USA, as the Power Rangers always said. As far as hitting someone Ivan Ooze has sent the iron sheet. For me, what it does for a lot of the wrestling fans, and that it releases a lot of tension. Yes, I enjoy. Yeah, he it's 105 degrees, 120 in the building. That man is wearing a full mask and a bodysuit. And the color red that he's wearing with the quality of the footage looks like they're blurring out his ass. He is so short. Cheeky is towering over this dude. Bringing all the kids together and down. Look at that drop kick! Hell yeah, that's a good little drop kick. That's got some hops. Oh, 
Watch, this guy's like randomly the best wrestler on the show. Guy wearing a Ken Anderson shirt in 1994. I saw pro wrestling's fake. Some pro wrestling's real. Something's fake. I just think this. I just think there are a lot of people in Alabama that look like the flame. I think. I think. I think we just worked ourselves into a shoot. Oh jeez, Shiki taking chair shots. You know, you know what the Power Rangers used to do? They used to beat the shit out of Iranians with chairs. It's concussion gun. Why did Shiki has a nail? He has like a nail, I believe, in his tights. That kid is terrified. They're just, they're doing checks again in the middle. Might be Nightmare Ted Allen. Be funny. Vicky, don't put that nail near your wiener. Oh, he just stabbed him. Iron Sheik just shanked the Power Ranger. Yeah, I think I think we all got confused that the flame was the guy who ran the last round. But now, now I'm pretty sure we're not. As the Iron Sheik stabbed this man repeatedly with a nail. You know, that that's what Rita Repulsa should have done. She said she should have sent an Olympian to go stab the Power Rangers with nails. This is chaos. All right, that that is the Nightmare Ted Allen, who's like a real wrestler. Is the Power Ranger or the Power Raider? He just gives up his hold. Okay, apparently he won the match. That all that poor man is heartbroken. His faith in Angel Grove is no more. Those things are taped I'm a together. Man. I got a job. I work hard for my family, but when it comes to wrestling, I'm totally different. I get my mind set on what I got to do and I <laughs> do it. comes the rest of it. What was I'm that? I want a couple of moves I want to bring out tonight to show my agility. And Please. So this big man can move around in the ring. As he said, he's quick, he can move. he's strong, and he's fast. I've seen him hurt his opponent. I love the Italian guy with the southern accent. Gabagool. I'm about to say, they get in the way, they get run over. Hey, but I bust him, that don't matter. I enjoy busting heads, period. My opponent's going, no, I've been there, and he's going to feel it sometime next week still. Yeah, Streaky won the gimmick battle roll because they, because if they tossed him over the top, he would have, like, broken his neck. Yes, WrestleMania 17, that was the best. And, like, he took so long to get to the ring that the other guys were lapping him. He's a battle royal. That guy looks like a wrestler. Why is he here? Yeah, no, Shiki couldn't, physically couldn't go over the top rope. Yeah, it's not that he refused the job. It's that he would have gotten hurt that he lost that match. What is this battle royal? <laughs> I don't think they announced it to the whole locker room. Here we got like just ran people randomly walking in. Yeah, but I think Heenan said that the, by by the time he got to the ring, it'd be like WrestleMania 37. Yeah. I want to see that guy do more of his moves. Random, random Mike Jackson.
<laughs> Alexander the Salamander. Oh, I love that. Love that. Oh, our, our buddy Nasty Steve's back. There's a mysterious masked man coming in the ring who is built the exact same as the ring crew guy. Poor Mike Jackson. He is by far the best guy here. Oh, geez. Okay, nobody got hurt. Nasty Steve in the flame. The 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 director's evil crew. Keep it down out there. Get it. Get, you get the director involved in the match, so you get more shots in the movie. I'm gonna choke his guts out. You know, like, like you do. Are they doing commentary over the PA now for some reason? They weren't the rest of the show. Oh, he's taking a bump. Oh. Doesn't sell it at all. He's giggling the whole time. What is this? Oh, oh backyarder swinging neckbreaker. Oh, it's a pole battle royal. Yeah, there's no way the flame's getting up there. Nasty Steve wins! That's not how it works. He hit the ground. He wins. That might be the only pay envelope in the building. <gasps> it's the ring crew guy! Apparently he's the money mark behind this show too. All right. And yeah, that's how you earn your pay as the ring crew guys. You got to win the battle royal at the end. The camera guy just walked into the lighting rig. Cloud head music. Yes. I guarantee you a group called Clownhead Music. And Freddie O and the Hellcats. I'm sure the director is in that band. Baby face in the locker rooms. I wanted. Why didn't that guy get more focus? That guy looks like he rules. Bola Duke. Fun head music. Yeah. Trish the Dish. Yeah. Trish the Dish. Great wrestling name. The Midnight Rockers spelled incorrectly. I, I hope Colonel David F. Freeman was the promoter, the old guy with the cigar. Yeah, 